Hello, welcome to my channel if you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I actually am filming in a different location. I am at my parents' house, but I wanted to get a video out and as you all maybe have noticed, I haven't been releasing my anticipated thriller release videos recently for the last couple months and I don't want you to think that I forgot about those videos. They will be coming back and I'll be doing more like I am today, catching up on them by doing recent releases. So I'm going to talk about the recently released thrillers that came out in August that I think you should all have your eyes on and I will be doing this for the other months that I miss. So I hope you stick around and enjoy the recommendations. Let me know if you've read any of these so far and if you have which ones I should prioritize. So I want to talk about The Lodger and this one came out on the first and it is by Valerie, I don't know how to say their last name, Co possibly? So this one is about Lee who discovers that her favorite barista is actually homeless and so she offers to actually lend her a room in her house. And Lee actually kind of becomes infatuated with Gina. And one day when she returns to the house, Gina is missing. And so she has to figure out what's going on. So Lee is obviously scared and she starts to try to uncover what actually happened to Gina. And so she's digging around for secrets and she discovers some things that change everything she knew about Gina and also that change everything that she knew about herself. The Lost Kings by Tyrell Johnson came out on the second. So Jeannie and her twin were extremely close growing up. They lived in this remote cabin with their father and he was an alcoholic and they didn't have a happy childhood and so they turned to one another for comfort. One night the father returns covered in blood and the next day he disappears as well as Jamie, the other twin. So 20 years later, Jeannie is not happy in her life. She's drinking too much. She doesn't have a great therapist. She's in a really bad relationship. And actually someone from her past turns up. And this was her crush from the past. And he said that he actually has figured out where her dad is currently and what actually happened all those years ago. So The Last Thing She Wrote by Julia Bodwell came out on the third. And the first thing that drew me to this title was the cover. I just love covers with girls on them in kind of an artistic manner and this definitely intrigued me with how she's underwater. I just thought the art was really pretty so I really wanted to look into this one and the synopsis actually sounds really interesting too. So Freddie was really close to his sister and he's still grappling with her difficult death where she took her own life. He's really struggling to forgive himself because he wasn't there the day that she died. So one day he goes into her bedroom and as he's looking through things, he actually finds a journal. And so reluctantly he decides to kind of go through the journal and as he starts reading, he realizes that he really did not know who his sister actually was and the things she was going through. And he discovers some secrets that she was hiding and that the truth is not what it originally seemed. So I'm hoping in this one that there are actually clips from the journal. I'm always really, really intrigued in books when there's like newspaper articles or journal clips or just things that you can read that are kind of mixed media. I really enjoy that. So I hope that that is incorporated into this book. The New House by Tess Stimson came out on the 4th and the synopsis for this one is really short and vague. So I'm actually just going to read it. So it says three couples about to purchase their dream home. How far would you go to get the perfect life? So that's all I know about this one. Sometimes when you know really little going into a book, it makes it so much more fun to read. And based on the synopsis, I really don't know what this book is gonna be about. It says perfect for fans of Lewis Candlish and Sherry Lapina. This psychological suspense novel will keep you on the edge of your seat. So Stay Awake by Megan Golden came out on the 9th. And I have read one other book by this author, The Night Swim, and I absolutely adored that book. I was really, really invested in the plot. I listened to it through audiobook, and there is a podcast element in that one that really, really, really intrigued me. I just enjoyed it a lot. The twist I did not see coming in it at all. So I really, really enjoyed that one. So this one I'm excited for. So in this one, Liv wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is and how she got there. So when she's dropped off at her apartment, she goes up there and a stranger actually answers and she's kicked out. So this kind of gives me dark matter vibes. So she tries to call the police for help, 
but when she reaches for her phone, it's not there. And she's actually holding a bloodstained knife and her hands are covered in scribbled messages saying, stay awake. So she had a wonderful life before this, but now she's completely disoriented. So one day when she turns on the news, she sees reports of a crime where with the victim's blood on the window has been written the same message she had scribbled on her hands before. So now she's on the run for a crime that she didn't commit and she's trying to piece together what's really going on. So again, this one seems a little vague. Seems like it's dealing with the amnesia trope, which when done really well can be excellent. And I enjoyed her last book, so I'm looking forward to picking this one up. So this next one I've actually already read and I feel like I want to mention it. I didn't love it, but I still want to mention it because I know some people have enjoyed it. And it's You're Invited by Amanda J. Atisa. And this one came out on the 9th and it was one of the book of the month picks. So I picked it up for that and it was marketed so well. So it was marketed as a story about this girl whose ex-best friend is marrying her ex-boyfriend. And so my problem with this book was that it could have been way juicier, I feel like. The drama could have been way more. I feel like the whole time you were waiting for something to happen and it kept alluding to, oh, this big event that happened in the past. And when you figure it out, I was like, oh, well, I kind of knew that already or I had already guessed that. And I didn't like the ending of it. And this book was compared to The Guest List and I just feel like it was very, very different. I felt like you didn't learn much about the character's past that was shocking or interesting to me, but I still wanted to include it on here because who knows, you may love this book. So Teen Killers in Love by Lily Sparks came out on the 9th, and I actually read the first book in this series, Teen Killers Club, this past month, and I'm obsessed with it. I loved it so, so, so much. And that one's a YA book, and it's about Signal, who was classified as a Class A criminal. So basically, she was accused of murdering her best friend, and a Class A criminal is the most dangerous to society. So she gets shipped away to jail, but on the way there, something happens and her bus changes routes and she ends up actually going to a camp to train juveniles to become assassins. So this one was really fast paced. I listened to it on audiobook. Actually the author gifted both this one and the next book to me. So kind of the author to do so and the audiobook was just so good. So I grew so attached to the characters throughout this book. So it's a thriller but it definitely has some romance in there, some YA romance and a love triangle. So if you're not into that kind of thing then I wouldn't recommend this book. And it's funny because I'm usually not into romance but for some reason this love triangle engaged me. It made me interested. I want to see what was going to happen and I just really grew to love the main character. So like I said the main character is being accused for murdering her best friend but she doesn't really remember what happened that night so throughout the book she's trying to piece together what actually happened and this one also has some really really good plot twists that I didn't see coming and the very ending was so so tense. I loved it and I can't wait to continue on the series. So I'm definitely reading Teen Killers in Love this month, but it did come out last month. After the Party by Georgiana Lees came out on the 12th. So Lizzie is in love with Dean, but he's never noticed her. So at the office Christmas party, which whenever I hear this, I think of the show, The Office, but this is not a comedy. So at the office Christmas party though, Dean actually tells Lizzie's friend that he's in love with her and her friend's name is Rebecca, but a few days later, Rebecca goes missing. Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard came out on the 16th, and out of everything on this list, I think this one has the most potential for me just due to the plot synopsis. It sounds so, so good, and I'm very excited to read it. So this one it takes place in an isolated setting, a cabin in the woods, which I just eat that up. I love that setting. Anything with an isolation trope, I'm immediately interested in because that personally really, really scares me and makes me feel unnerved thinking of being just isolated and cut off from the world. This is also about a horror movie being made, so kind of that behind the scenes horror movie aspect I feel like could be really cool. So like I said, this is about a horror movie that's being made in a remote forest. So the lead is a former soap opera actress and she's stepping in last minute because the original actress had to back out. And so she's hoping that this will be her big break into kind of the mainstream movie world. 
Something isn't quite right though, and soon Adele discovers that the real horrors aren't in the movie, but rather things that are happening off the page. The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead came out on the 16th, and I've actually already read this one. I rated it four stars, and I've been seeing so many five-star ratings and rave reviews for this one, so I highly, highly recommend picking this one up. However, I will say that there are a lot of triggers in this, and that's personally probably why I gave it a lower rating, was because it was really hard for me to get through it, and there was a lot of repetitiveness. It makes sense why it was repetitive because of kind of the way the story was being told. But for me, that was a little difficult for me to get through. But I still had to rate it four stars because Ashley Winstead is a very skilled author. I thought her whole author's note at the end was very, very informative and interesting about the meaning behind this novel. But let's get into the synopsis. So this is about Shay and she had an extremely traumatizing past when she was in college and she was actually manipulated along with her other friends to join a cult. She has built a completely new life for herself. She lives in a very upscale neighborhood. She is married to a wealthy husband and she's trying to forget her past, but she listens to this weekly true crime podcast. And one week she finds out that one of her college best friends has recently passed away under suspicious circumstances. So the news are calling it a suicide, but she suspects that it was actually a murder. And so she teams together with the host of the true crime podcast to try to figure out what really happened to her friend. And throughout this process, they start to uncover more and more horrifying truths. And she starts to go undercover to learn more secrets. The Blame Game by Sandy Jones came out on the 16th. Naomi is a psychologist and she specializes in domestic abuse cases. And she tries really hard not to get overly involved in her clients' lives, but it's hard for her. She helped her client Jacob leave his wife who was abusing him, but this time she's worried she's gone too far. On the morning of the first session after Jacob's escape, she starts to become worried because doors are left open that she's sure she closed and his case file is actually missing. So she starts to wonder if the open doors and the missing case files are actually related to her dark past. And she gets really worried that she may actually be in danger. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney came out on the 18th and this one I'm really excited for. I personally did not enjoy Rock, Paper, Scissors, but I will say I want to give this author another chance. And this one seems more promising. I've actually started it already. I'm a couple chapters in and already I'm really, really enjoying the atmosphere of it. And I am more invested in this plot than I was in Rock, Paper, Scissors because that one just dealt with a couple, whereas this one is dealing with a whole entire family and it's just a bigger cast that I'm more interested in. So Daisy Darker's whole family is gathering together to celebrate their Nana's 80th birthday and years ago a fortune teller actually told Nana that she would pass away on her 80th birthday. And she lives in this crumbling gothic old house on this remote island and when the tide comes in they're actually stuck there. So the family has been avoiding each other for years, they have a rocky past and not a great history together but they are all going to be trapped together because of the tide in this house and people start being picked off one by one. So this has been compared to obviously Agatha Christie's books and I haven't gotten too far in this one to say too much, but I am intrigued so far and I'm enjoying it and I'm listening to it on audiobook. The Last House on the Cliff by Anne Wynne Clark came out on the 18th. And this one, I love the ominous cover. I love the isolated setting once again. And I just can't get enough of isolated settings. They're just so much fun in thrillers. I feel like I enjoy thrillers with spooky atmospheres way more than just a typical domestic thriller. There's obviously exceptions to this, but it's kind of typical for me to really enjoy thrillers more when I like the setting as well. So Lowry returns home to a remote island where she grew up once her aunt passes away and she brings her daughter. Strange things start to happen though when she's visiting and her daughter actually tells her that an old woman visits her when she's alone. And also an old creepy doll keeps being left for her to find. And whenever I hear a creepy doll in a plot synopsis, I'm always very intrigued because dolls really freak me out. So her daughter actually goes missing and she has to dive into their family past and look into their dark secrets to find out what's really going on. And she discovers that they're actually in grave danger. 
So this next one, I can't lie, I was extremely drawn to because of the very beautiful cover. It's holographic, which is really cool. I feel like I don't see this on books very much. So I'm gonna read the description for this one. And this one is The Darkness of Others by Kate Hollihan. And this one came out on the 23rd, and Amani is married to her husband who owns a restaurant. And they're wealthy, and their children are smart and popular, and they're honestly just living the NYC dream. In contrast, Tanya is living the NYC nightmare. So she dreamed of becoming a Broadway star, but she hasn't been able to fulfill this dream, and she is waitressing, trying to take care of her teenage daughter, whose father is actually back in their lives and is really, really scaring her. So Lockdown actually ends up closing Philip's restaurant, and in order to make some more money, they decide to open up a room in their house for rent, and Tanya actually goes and rents it. But when she moves in, Tanya starts falling behind on rent payments, and actually Imani starts becoming very, very suspicious of Tanya, because there was a murder that happened to the Walkmans, another family in their neighborhood, and she actually starts suspecting that Tanya is the killer. Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter came out on the 23rd, and this is actually the sequel to Pieces of Her, which I still haven't read. I want to read. I definitely want to read more Karen Slaughter. I've been saying that for a long time, and I've only read Pretty Girls and The Good Daughter, and I love her writing style. I just need to pick up more of her books. But I think I've been a little nervous too because Pretty Girls is probably my favorite book of all time. However, The Good Daughter I liked significantly less. I only gave it three stars. And I've heard from people that either you really, really love Pretty Girls or you really, really love The Good Daughter. But for me, I'm just nervous to pick up her next books because I really want to love them, but I need to stop putting it off. Emily Vaughn was murdered on prom night in her town, and she was murdered because of her secret. 40 years later, Andrea is a U.S. Marshal, and she's transferred to the town that this murder occurred in to protect a judge who has been receiving death threats. She isn't focused really on protecting the judge though, she's more interested in the Emily Vaughn case and she's particularly interested in it because they haven't found the killer. And so she starts to try to investigate what really happened and uncover the mystery. Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus came out on the 30th. So immediately I'm loving the cover of this one. This is a YA book. It looks like it has a dark academic vibe, which is one of my favorite tropes in books. I just love dark academia in thrillers so much. So I was drawn to this and this one also has a podcast element, which is another trope that I really love. So four years ago, Bryn left St. Ambrose after her favorite teacher was murdered. And the teacher's body was actually found out in the woods by three students, but the mystery hasn't been solved. So now she actually has her dream internship, which is working for a true crime podcast, which ugh, I would love that internship. I mean, first of all, I say that, but then again, I'm really disturbed by true crime because it is true, but let's leave this tangent. So she's interning at this true crime podcast and she really wants to finally solve what happened. So her ex best friend Trip was actually the student who discovered the teacher. So without his account of the events, the two other students would have been accused of murder. So everything he told the police though was a lie. And Bryn starts uncovering truths about who her ex best friend was, things about the school, Everything starts kind of turning her world upside down and this changes everything she knows. Someone got away with murder and never left. So let me know in the comments again if you've read any of these and which one seems the most interesting to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be definitely making some more recent releases. I think I didn't do a July anticipated release video, I believe. I'll have to kind of go back and look at my notes, but I know I need to fill in some months that I missed. So I will be filling in those months and also keep your eyes peeled. I will be posting more consistently on my channel because finally I went down one day in my work schedule. So now I have a more free week, which will make a huge difference for being able to film more for my YouTube channel. So I hope you guys are excited for that. I know I am and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.